Most personal trainers who have an interest in hormone health fall into one of four camps. We have what I call the illuminated sinker. You may have discovered the concept of cycle syncing and experienced aha moment where everything clicked, your journey became a revelation, and suddenly you found a profound connection between hormonal rhythms and your overall well being. We have number two, the skeptical sinker. So maybe you were initially skeptical about cycle syncing, yet through exploration and compelling research, you found enough to intrigue you. Next, we have the doubter. You think it's a load of nonsense, there's conflicting information, you perceive it as a passing fad. You might challenge the status quo and you question menstrual cycle insights altogether. We have the educated advocate as well. You recognize the importance of education and you dive deeper on how to navigate the complexities of the endocrine system and maybe you become a well-educated advocate um, and you have some really awesome tools in your toolkit. Which camp resonates with you most? Comment below with your thoughts and me, I was extremely skeptical. I off-wrote it myself. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Omega Zumpano. I'm an exercise scientist, menstrual cycle educator, and I'm here to make the fitness industry more hormone friendly by educating personal trainers on hormone health here on YouTube, on Instagram, and in my Cycle Coach Academy certification program. My goal is that you gain the confidence, the skills, and the evidence-based solutions to optimize and balance your client's hormones. And my method is different because it was specifically designed for personal trainers like you who who suspect that they themselves might have hormone imbalance and suspect that most of your client base does as well and you just want to serve them better. My certification program, the Cycle Coach Academy, helped Anastasia, this wonderful human being, gain the tools, the skills, and confidence supporting women's hormones. The result is that she helped her clients become more consistent, she says here. Not only does she have a method to implement with confidence, she has now hosted workshops and retreats, thereby elevating her coaching practice to focus on female hormones. In this video, we'll take a look at prevalent misconceptions surrounding menstrual cycle fitness and nutrition, and together we'll explore the common misunderstandings that many trainers face. You will gain insight into interpreting research for fitness and nutrition goals. I'll share a case study from my one-on-one -on -one client, Leslie, highlighting the impact of cyclical fitness coupled with proactive PMS nutrition. So throughout this monologue, it's not a discussion, it's a monologue. <gasps> I'll present evidence from various studies, including meta-analysis on recovery during the period. So you can join the conversation by sharing your thoughts and experiences in the comments. And as always, this video aims to serve as a comprehensive guide for personal trainers, equipping you with the knowledge to refine your approach to hormone-friendly fitness, baby. The number one misconceptions many personal trainers have is the misunderstanding of hormones and research and its implications on exercise. If you've bought into the concept of cycle syncing, you may believe that exercise intensity should decrease in the luteal phase and peak before ovulation. And while there's some truth to this in terms of substrate utilization, it represents a flawed interpretation of the available research now in this current date. And what's often overlooked but crucial in the context of fitness is guess. What is crucial in the context of fitness? Feel free to share your guess in the comments. I will give you a second. It's cyclical nutrition. It's not just a, about adjusting exercise intensity with the menstrual cycle, there's a more significant factor at play, and that's cyclical nutrition for exercise performance, recovery, and PMS management. To comprehend why this aspect matters more than just altering exercise intensity, consider the role of glycogen, stored muscle sugar. The nuanced understanding of how we use carbs differently throughout the cycle provides a holistic perspective on how nutritional choices impact exercise effectiveness, highlighting the inadequacy of focusing solely on cyclical exercise intensity. This study in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition published in 2021 calls for a personalization of cyclical nutrition for women in sports. 
The research article shows us that glycogen utilization changes throughout the cycle. So our ability to get that last rep in hinges on our ability to use glycogen. So to summarize this research, the emerging evidence emphasizes the need for sex specific nutritional strategies for active females. Considering physiological differences influenced by sex hormones through life stages and menstrual cycle phases. While individualization based on specific goals is crucial, this review underscores the universality of basic requirements. The call for future research highlights the current lack of studies on female specific nutritional strategies for health, performance, and body composition, urging a more thorough understanding in the field for personal trainers to better support their female clients' unique nutritional needs, baby. So as you already know, our ability to change our body composition is contingent on our ability to build muscle and our ability to build muscle is contingent on our ability to go to failure or near failure on exercise. And in this process, muscle glycogen or stored muscle sugar is hugely important. And so too is restoring and replenishing muscle glycogen with nutrition. This is only one little slice of the pie, baby. And so here is where the luteal phase exercise intensity comes into play. Luteal phase research is extremely consistent on showing us that the perceived levels of exertion increase in the luteal phase. So by far, getting to that final rep is gonna be harder in the luteal phase. Couple this with the reality that 90% of women experience performance altering changes like cramps, breast tenderness, trend, Run with your breast tender? No, thank you. That's so shit. Hey, mood changes, anxiety, sleep loss, and that's just naming a few performance altering luteal phase symptoms. And when you start noticing all these things, you're putting the pieces together and you actually find that exercise is only a small piece of the puzzle or like a little sliver of the pie. The fuel management and the management of symptoms is actually key for people in the luteal phase. So my point here is that nutrition is actually way more important than exercise intensity and calling yourself a cycle syncing fitness coach and just focusing on cycle syncing foods and cycle syncing fitness is just not enough. The number two misconceptions coaches often have, it's the belief that a calorie deficit is essential for clients to change body composition and it's not. I've seen it in my own practice and I've seen it for my students and in their practice as well. And I understand that this assertion might be challenging for some, but let us get into the facts. In a recent Instagram post that I'll link to below, I discussed how caloric deficits downregulate LH, FSH through the neuropeptide kispeptin. This mechanism could potentially inhibit ovulation, leading to issues related to hormone health, bone health, thyroid health, and brain health. I think we all care about those types of health. Notably, it's been demonstrated to decrease the accrual of lean tissue, even when protein intake is sufficient, as shown in this randomized control trial in the Journal of Physiology. And while more research on this topic is needed, I'd like to illustrate this with a case study involving one of my one-on-one -on -one clients, Leslie. She's a former dancer and a new mom of two, and she aimed to address fatigue, maintain consistent exercise, and better understand her hormones. She also had an aspiration to see her abs again. It was a secondary goal. PMS symptoms included mood changes, gut issues, and skin blemishes, all intensifying during the luteal phase. And Leslie's mission centered on feeling lean, toned, and thin. Minimizing bloating and puffiness and gaining strength, muscle coordination, uh, overall happiness, and confidence in your, her, her appearance. So let me walk you through the program I designed for Leslie. We have her cyclical nutrition plan. So Leslie followed a personalized three month cyclical nutrition plan based on her menstrual cycle. And of course we did corrective exercise as well. We had nutrition recovery. She adhered to my cyclical nutrition chart, which I provide to all my clients. And if you wanna just grab a copy, I will link that below. We increased her caloric consumption during her luteal phase. We utilized PMS specific foods to combat 
combat fatigue and her estrogen dominance. And for more on that topic, I don't want to go into it right now. I'll link a video on PMS management. We also increased her pro protein and fat calories and follow the estrogen balancing basics to help her manage her bloating, puffiness, and mood changes. And I have a video on how to do that right here. The results for Leslie were transformative as she shared in her testimonial here. She noticed changes in her muscles, subtle shifts in movement, and improved skin, and sticking to cycle-specific foods. She reduced her gastrointestinal upset, she had a lighter feeling, and she was more in tune to her hormonal fluctuations and how she preferred to feel. And she experienced less body pain and more soreness, obviously, and felt more grounded and on the correct path and body composition also changed. She could start seeing her abs again, all without caloric deficits and creating a plan around exercise and balancing her hormones too. Um, so instead of trying to contort her body into a certain box, she actually supported her body and achieved those more physical results that a lot of your clients want to achieve. And uh, if all of this is adding up to you, I would love to hear from you. If you could comment below and tell me if this all makes sense to you and if you're feeling it, I'd really appreciate hearing from you. Let's dive into the number three thing that most personal trainers get wrong about hormones. You should take it easy with all your clients in the late luteal phase. And you'd be surprised to find out this about me. Luteal phase training is highly variable and this is what we know so far. The research article in the International Journal of Research and Public Health in February of 2021 showed that luteal phase strength, aerobic capacity, and anaerobic capacity shift throughout the 14-ish days of the luteal phase. And here's what the authors have to say. Athletes most commonly perceived performance to be best in all phases of the menstrual cycle except the early follicular, aka the bleed phase, and the late luteal phase, and performance was perceived to be impaired in the early follicular phase and the late luteal phase compared to the rest of the menstrual cycle. In the late luteal phase, we have consistent research showing us that performance goes down and perceived exertion goes up. We also know that energy demand slightly increases, and if those energy demands aren't met by nutrition, we're gonna see performance go down and worsening PMS symptoms as well. This article in Scientific Reports, published in October of 2018, examined how the levels of certain chemicals and nutrition changes throughout the menstrual cycle in healthy women. They found that during the luteal phase, which is the second half of the cycle again, there were differences in amino acids and lipids, suggesting changes in the body's needs due to hormone fluctuations. These changes could affect anxiety and depression during the premenstrual time, uh, uh, it could also be a part of PMDD, and this highlights the potential benefits of nutrition strategies focusing on protein, vitamin B6, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids, and glutathione for women at risk, baby. So while it's important to vary intensity through the luteal phase, it's even more important to plan for luteal phase nutrition as well. And if you're not planning for luteal phase nutrition, it's a huge, piece that's missing. So let me call you to the FIT principle that you learned in your basic PT certification program. These are all variables, frequency, intensity, time, and type of exercise, and these should all shift throughout a well periodized program. And the menstrual cycle just so happens to be a mesocycle that we can work with while adjusting those variables. The overall intensity of a workout program you create decreases slightly towards the late luteal phase and you'll need to scrutinize your own client's details like recovery, cyclical nutrition, etc. So here's the deal, you have to educate yourself. Hit the like button if you're loving the research and keep in mind that at the end of the video, I'm gonna share my research treasure trove with you. It is a comprehensive compilation of studies and resources on menstrual cycle, fitness, and nutrition. Number four thing that most PTs get wrong about the period specifically is actually one of two things. We have the belief that workout performance should increase in the bleed phase, or number two, we believe that we should take it easy in the bleed phase. Um, so those are two beliefs that you could potentially have. And 
they're both wrong when they're applied in the wrong scenario. If you're training someone with high estrogen and high prostaglandins, for example, they are going to have worse performance in the bleed phase and they are gonna fall into the camp of someone who might even cancel sessions during their period. If you are a high performance athlete, you might find that you have decreased performance during the late luteal phase but perform better in the bleed phase because the hormones are now low. Keep in mind this meta-analysis published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research in 2021. It showed us that recovery is impacted during the period. And in either case, for people who are on their period, you can optimize recovery by taking longer rest periods between sets, emphasizing stretching, post-workout, and foam rolling pre-workout, and encouraging a pre- and post-workout snack to aid in recovery. So in closing, let's distill the key takeaways from our exploration in menstrual cycle fitness and nutrition. Uh, we wanna challenge those common misconceptions in the fitness industry. We have to recognize that hormone health research goes beyond exercise intensity, and we have to emphasize the critical role of cyclical nutrition for holistic well-being and performance. Make sure to individualize your approach. Acknowledging the nuances of the menstrual cycle's impact on exercise performance, you gotta tailor your training programs and nutrition strategies to align with the specific needs of yourself and your clients to optimize their fitness journey. And as you think about this, remember that this video is just the beginning. Make sure to get your research treasure trove, which is linked below. It is a comprehensive compilation of studies and resources dedicated to help you understand intricities of the menstrual cycle. So you can get that going to the link in the description. In your journey towards home and friendly fitness starts here and I am so excited to have you. If you wanna take your expertise a little bit deeper, watch this video on cyclical exercise nutrition next. I'll see you there.